Hi, everyone, and welcome to our webinar. Sorry for the couple minutes delay getting started there. We're having a little bit of technical issues. Um, I first just want to make sure that everyone can hear me okay, since we were having some issues. Could, um, could someone please raise their hand and uh, let me know by indicating raising your hand if, if you can hear uh, the broadcast? Okay, great. Thank you, Sydney. All right, super. So, yeah, apologies for the delay on that. Uh, so, thank you for joining us during these really challenging times here. Um, Caledonia Marine is uh, hard at work here trying to come up with some solutions as to how we can continue to interact with all of our customers uh, during this time where we can't necessarily get on an airplane and come to see you. And so, uh, among the things that we are trying is uh, a new portal that we are calling Link. And welcome to our first live webinar uh, on our, from our Link portal. So uh, it, it, I guess I should start introducing myself as well. Apologies. So my name is Margo Newcomb. I am the Director of Marketing Communications with Teledyne Marine. I'm happy to welcome you today. Um, our first webinar is going to be with Paul Devine, who is always both educational and entertaining. I think you guys are in for a treat here as he's going to walk you through how to use the ReadyD software uh, that uh, goes for, uh, along with uh, Teledyne RDI Sentinel V ADCP. And thank you to everyone for filling in the poll at the beginning there. So we got a little bit of a feel for what type of users we have, which is always helpful. So uh, without further ado, I'll go ahead and introduce Paul Devine. Paul is uh, our sales manager for the Americas for instruments and imaging. Uh, he has a ton of, engineer of experience in this area. Uh, he uh, graduated with a coastal engineering degree from the University of Florida. He has been using ADCPs for over 20 years. I'm sure that many of you on this call are probably have met Paul or run into him over the years. He's been with Teledyne and, and RD Instruments for a very long time. So without further ado, I'm going to go ahead and hand this off to Paul. Hello. Uh, thank you all for coming. Um, I really appreciate the opportunity to uh, transmit. And uh, um, if, um, if you notice on the link website when you register, there's there's a request for personalized one-on-one -on -one sessions, and and that way I can actually receive too. Um, I don't want to be just a an active sonar. I wanna I wanna I wanna transmit and receive. But uh, here we go for transmitting only. Um, I am um, very happy to be here, and this picture of me is. I'm leaning on a rapid cast winch. Uh, Paul Igo, our rep in the Northeast, took this picture of me. Uh, um, the next session that we're going to do, the next link session, is going to be specifically on the rapid cast. So I hope I'll see you again in, in two weeks' time. Okay, today what we're talking about is the ReadyV software. And for those of you that aren't familiar with the ADCP, um, the Sentinel V ADCP, the ReadyV software is what you use to configure the Sentinel V for deployment in the ocean for a long time. Uh, here's some pictures of a Sentinel V and a Sea Spider. Um, this is the external battery case of the Sentinel V. Um, and this is a uh, deployment in, off of Hawaii, off of a lifeguard boat. They've lowered it to the bottom with a lift bag using divers and left it on the bottom out at, uh, on the North Shore of Hawaii. This is obviously deployment prior to the big waves. Huh? Um, this is a data set, not from that Hawaii deployment, but uh, another data set and showing, I just wanted to, for those of you that aren't familiar with the ADCP, this is the type of data that you get out of it. And you've got to configure the ADCP before you deploy it to sample the ocean. And um, this is the end result of that process. This is an 87 day deployment duration. Here's the X axis this time. We got March, April, May. Three months and we're looking up we're looking at the water direction so that's the direction the water is flowing to and um, yellow is to the west and blue is to the east and you'll see the currents oscillating back and forth along shore at this particular site this is the speed of the current so uh, currents got up to at this particular time the currents got up to about a half a meter per second and that, that corresponded with a time when the waves were very high. This is the significant wave height, HS, HMAX. So you'll see large wave event, another large wave event. And you'll see, you know, there is a correlation between the height of the waves and the, and the uh, current speed at this particular location. Um, <clears throat> so wave height, wave period, wave direction. And then there's a lot of interest now in the acoustic backscatter. 
this is on the, if I go back, you'll see the Sentinel-V has got a vertical beam. That's a direct measurement of the range to surface. And also the signal strength in the water column, the acoustic signal strength. So when the waves, when the currents got, when the, when the currents got large, waves got big, or the waves increased, currents increased, we also saw an increase in the intensity, the signal strength along the beam. And uh, so that this is an indication of high, um, high sediment concentration in the water column. It's pretty cool. So, um, we, you know, this is, this is a, another plot of that same data set where, you know, we said yellow was to the west. This is current direction. And this is a plot showing the current speed from near bottom to near surface. And you'll see at the bottom, it's weaker, getting stronger as you get to the surface, but the currents are going to the west, 270 degrees to the west. And a little bit later in the data set, after the storm passed and the waves changed direction, current started running the other way up the coast. So it went to the west early in the storm and then to the east later in the storm. We'll see. You know, so this these current speeds are, um, you know, this 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 green color is 30 centimeters per second. This is closer to 40 centimeters per second. And you'll see the ADCP provides multiple measurements, multiple bins within the water columns. You're seeing how the currents change uh, as you move vertically through the water column. Um, previously, this is this is an 87-day deployment where we have collected a, a very long time series of currents, current speed, current profiles, and waves. Um, when we measure waves, we have to average, we have to sample for a very long time. So this is, this is five minutes of data. When we sample a wave burst, we've got about 20 minutes of data. And we've got to average out the waves. We've got to, you know, stochastically, spectrally characterize the waves. And um, we're looking at this particular window here as a five-minute glimpse during that wave burst. And uh, you'll see, the again, the vertical echo intensity. This is the signal strength um, in the water column. And we'll see, we actually see the surface looking up. So this is from the bottom to 17 meters. You see the individual waves passing. So these are the, this shows how groupy the waves are. We've got, uh, I'm a surfer. I don't know how many surfers in the room, but you spend a lot of time sitting on your surfboard when you're surfing, uh, waiting for the waves to come. So this is. This is showing big wave, you know, a wave group, a lull, and then another wave group. And we're seeing the speed and direction and vertical velocity. In this particular wave crest, we're looking at 1.5 meters per second up as you go up into the wave crest and almost 1.5 meters per second down in the wave trough. So this is the kind of data. This is the data that you get, you download out of the instrument. But you've got a, the purpose of today's uh, talk is to talk about planning the deployment. So we mentioned Link. You guys all got here, so thank you for coming. Um, on the Link website, if you're on the main Teledyne Marine website, the very top right is service and support. I highlighted it. Now I'm I'm at home on my Wi-Fi. Uh, I didn't want to do the bandwidth limitations. I didn't want to actually take you through the website, but um, you can, I recommend, so TeledineMarine.com, www.TeledineMarine.com, go to service and support, and you get access to all of the Teledyne Marine customer support pages. I'm going to go now click on Teledyne RDI's webpage. And on the support page, you get the ability to download all the web, the manuals, the notes, videos, software, firmware, get our specs get information on more training, get an RMA to return it for, for um, service. Here's our 24-7 technical support line. Um, uh, but what I'm going to do is I'm going to click on manuals and guides. And then I'm now I'm on the RDI customer support site and I can get access to all of our technical manuals. And I'm going to I'm going to focus today on the self-contained deployment guide for the Sentinel V. And we access this guide, and we see uh, Sentinel-V self-contained deployment guide. And what this this gives you an overview of how to prepare your ADCP, you know, change your batteries and O-rings, and 
connect to it, plan your deployment, deploy it, and then recover data. And what, please note, um, one of the things, um, one of, there's two reasons why I'm not connected to the ADCP today. One is that it, it's at RDI and I'm, I'm in my living room. Um, the second is that uh, um, in order to connect with your ADCP to deploy it for a self-contained deployment, you connect to it wireless, wirelessly. And there's a touch sensor on the end cap. You touch the sensor and it wakes up the system and it fires up the wireless LAN. So what you do is you, you then go to your browser and connect to Sentinel-V. Here's a, we're, this is, we're connecting to Sentinel-V serial number 19833. And you connect to it and then it, it connects via um, wireless LAN. And then what you do is you open up a browser, open up an internet browser. Uh, 192.168.0.2 is the address for the Sentinel-V. And then you you're actually start communicating through a browser interface with the system. The software is resonant on the instrument, on the ADCP. Pretty cool. So what the ReadyV interface allows you to do is you, you can set your sampling strategy. Um, and um, download your data, do all the system checks, review your resources. So what we're really going to focus today is um, on the deployment planning. I'm not going to go into the process of doing all the system tests and calibrating your compass and zeroing your pressure sensor and um, change, you know, updating the system clock. And I'm not going to go there. I'm really only going to deal with the planning today. So what I have on my laptop is a copy of the offline version of ReadyV. And if, you, if you're interested in this, please send us an email. Um, my email is paul.divine at teledyne.com and we can secure file transfer you a copy of this interface, this offline interface. So you don't actually need to be connected to the Sentinel-V in order to plan a deployment. And this is useful if if let's say you're a principal investigator and you have an idea for how you want to sample the ocean, you can develop a plan offline and then send that file to whomever is actually going to be deploying your ADCP for you. Um, which is, well, it's, it's useful, right? It's a, it's a useful tool so you can um, preserve your setup outside of the instrument. Um, so you have a record of how the instrument was deployed. I don't know how many times people have called me and said, you know, hey, I, I just deployed my ADCB, but I don't have a record of the deployment. Well, you, if you save your, save your setup, you can export your setup. And it, it downloads to your download directory. And then you can email that to your tech, and your tech can import that file. Pretty cool. Okay, so um, we talked before about measuring waves and currents and, and how the wave deployment is a much longer burst. You've got a sample for over 17 minutes. Our default is 2,100 pings at a two hertz rate for 17 minute duration and to sample waves. Current burst, right? We're seeing here on this, this screen, this is a, a schematic showing when the ADCP is up and sampling. We wake up at the top of the hour. Uh, we sample intensively with profile number one, 2,100 pings for 17 minute duration. And then the time between ensembles is one hour. We wake up at the top of the next hour and do it again. The top of the second hour, do it again. Top of the third hour, do it again. We're also now, um, we're measuring two different profile types. Profile type one is always um, when our, our post-processing software, post-processes for waves, we're always going to look for profile number one for the wave information. Profile number two is going to be for the currents only. So profile number two is um, uh, set up uh, for a much shorter duration. You don't, In order to sample currents, you don't need to sample for quite as long of a time to average out the wave information or to characterize the wave information. If you're, if you're trying to measure currents, it, you can get by with a much shorter burst. 
So this, this profile is for measuring currents every 20 minutes. If I wanted to change that, I'd click on that window and I'd change time between ensembles from 20 to one of the other options, 20 minutes, 15 minutes, 10 minutes. I'm going to change it to 10 minutes. And now you'll see that I've got extra, I've got twice as many ensemble average current profiles. So I hit save. So now I've got currents every 10 minutes. And please note, when, when we post-process the data from the Sentinel-V, you'll see that you know we have a, a long burst that's used to measure waves, and then we got shorter bursts for currents. Uh, when we post-process, when we use our, our velocity software to post-process the information for waves and currents to do all of the averaging, um, we'll, we'll reach into this wave burst, wave specific, or this longer burst, and generate current profiles every 10 minutes from this longer burst. So you're left with a continuous record, like we saw here. This was a setup showing, you know, where we had a long burst for waves and a shorter burst for currents, and we post-process it. We combine it all into one continuous current profile data set with waves every hour. So it's currents every whatever, 10, 20 minutes, whatever you choose, with waves every hour. Okay. Um, um, this, I am simulating the results from a Sentinel V20. Um, 20, the Sentinel V20 has a 20 meter range. I can change this. And I'm going to simulate, oh, a Sentinel-V50 or Sentinel-V100. This is a 50-meter range system. This is a 100-meter range system. So I, I'm going to keep it with the, I'm going to um, keep it as the Sentinel-V20 right now, and now go over to step three, review my resources. And I see that I'm operating off of an internal battery pack, and my deployment duration is 30 days. The max duration of the recorder with this setup is 2,000 days, but the max duration of power is 36.9 days. If I needed to change my deployment duration to go to 90 days, I update that, and now I've got red. Uh-oh, I am short on battery power. So I can go back in here, and, and like we did, uh, like you saw in the earlier, the preceding, the picture with the Sentinel V on the Sea Spider with the external battery kit, battery pack, I can add an external battery case. And now my battery is not red anymore. I've got enough juice for a 90 day deployment. Um, I've got max duration power 110 days. Um, I've got extra, I've got extra power. So what I can do is go in here and 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 uh, I can I can um, I've got extra juice. I can go in and either either save some reserve battery capacity, or I can go in and 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 change my setup for profile two. I can do number of pings. I can increase it to 180. And what that do, by averaging more pings together, I get a lower standard deviation. Let's do that. Let's go back to 120. At 120, I've got a 1.1 centimeter per second standard deviation for this 0.3 meter bin size. If I, if I change it to 180, now I've got my standard deviation below a centimeter per second. And I'm still at 88%. So I would I would now export this and then connect to the ReadyV instrument itself and import that planning file because I'm I'm at home not connected to ADCP I'm just on my Wi-Fi. So um, <clears throat> I hope that's clear. Um, what I'm going to do now is um, so I have this scenario loaded. If you, you can see that if I click here,
for the step for the very step number one, let's say I didn't want to measure waves, I can go back and load. You know, here's a dual resolution setup. So now in this in this setup, the same Sentinel V20, I've got a long range setup and then a high res setup, and they're sampling concurrently. What what, what this is is interleaved pings, long range, high res. So this is a 2.4 meter, 30 meter range, 2.4 meter cell size resolution in the profile, the 30 meter range. And then interleaved with those pings is a high res profile, shorter range, higher resolution bin size. And for this setup with my battery internal battery pack inside of the system with an external battery case 90 day duration I'm only using 19 percent of the battery so with this type of setup if I wanted to I could I could leave this out for let's see 360 days can we do a year yeah we can do a year with a dual resolution overlapping ping type setup so um, I'm now going to change. I'm going to do something similar. I'm going to look at a Sentinel V100 5V. This is a low, lower frequency system. And I'm going to go set a sampling strategy. I'm going to I'm going to select a offshore engineering or a open ocean setup where we're doing time between ensembles, 30 minutes, 100 meter range. 60 pings. Still with that year-long deployment with the external battery case. If I don't want the external battery case, right, I'd, I only want to deploy an ADCP, a standalone ADCP, uh -oh, now I can't get a year out of it. It's red. So I've got to make some trade-offs. So I've got to make some, I've got to go, uh, yeah, I've got to, I've got to, I've got to, I've got to change my setup so that I can get that year out of that one internal battery pack. And right now we're at 216% of the battery. So unfortunately, I can't do for year-long deployment, I can't do time between ensembles 30 minutes with a single battery. I've got to change it to an hour ensemble. I'm still red. 55 pinks. 50 pings. There you go. I'm not red anymore. Save it. So that's a open ocean deep water deployment. And I could save this setup. Export it. Now I go show in folder. This plan file. I'm going to open this plan file here, send to, uh, let's see, open with. For those of you that are familiar with a workhorse and not familiar with a send to, oh, shoot. I open the plan in Notepad just to see what it looks like, right? It's an ASCII readable file that you can save. And these are all of the these are the, the the commands that are being sent to the the system. Your blanking distance, your profile mode, all, all these things. But you have an ASCII readable um, record of how you deployed the ADCP. Okay. Um, so. Uh, if, if I were connected to an ADCP, now I can run all my system tests and calibrate my compass, zero my pressure sensor, change my battery, uh, log, you know, uh, set my system clock, make sure I change my O-rings every time on my desiccant and my oil and um, deploy it, get your ADCP in the water. So um, I look forward to interacting with you. If you have any additional questions in a one-on-one mode, um, my email is paul.devine, D-E-V-I-N-E, 
at tellydyne.com. And uh, let's, uh, you can request to go on the Teledyne link website, request a meeting. You can call me out specifically or, um, and uh, I look forward to chatting with you guys in another two weeks uh, about RapidCast. So I don't know if we want to, if we have a couple, a couple of minutes to open it up for questions. Um, got about two minutes left. Yeah, got the, sorry about that. somebody's phone's ringing. <laughs> yeah, sorry, that would be me. I'm just looking here to see if we have any questions coming through. So raise your um, hands if you could, if anyone has a question that they do want to ask Paul in these last few minutes. And, and while we're waiting for um, hands to, any potential hands to go up here, while I still have all of you, uh, I would like to uh, run one more poll past you here where we can rate this session so um these are these are new this is a new forum for us trying to do these as live webinars i know we were hoping to be a little more interactive but the good news is we had so many respondents <laughs> that it was really hard to do interactive but again i'll we'll hold on the line here um to uh run through any questions after uh but i want to thank you and i want to thank paul this was um great really educational as always paul uh, the email that you're going to receive after this event will have a link to the recorded webinar, and I'll also be sure to include Paul's email in, in, address in there for you as well. So again, if you have questions, feel free to reach out to Paul uh, directly. Um, please also be sure to join us next week. Our next live uh, webinar is going to be on Wednesday. Uh, Carl Mancuso from Teledyne Bentos is going to be presenting uh, some of our really cool and interesting applications that we've done with our acoustic modem. So uh, I know a lot of people aren't even necessarily aware that we do acoustic modems, but uh, yes, we do. And, and Carl's going to take you through some, um, some really cool applications. So uh, until then, thank you everyone for your time today. Everyone stay safe. Um, and thank you for answering the poll. We'll leave it open for a few more minutes here. Uh, let me just check questions, see if we have any hands that came up here. Oh, we do have one, let's see. Oh, nope, that was just a thank you. Okay, copy the presentation, that was addressed. All right, I think we're good. So Paul, thank you again, everyone that attended. Thank you, have a very excellent remainder of your day and uh, we hope to see you online soon. Thank you all for coming, appreciate it.